Peace and Black Power, everybody. I want to welcome you to another episode of Max Crypto News, where we talk about these intangible coins at all times. Um, today, I got a nice show set up for the family. Yo, family, remember, go to NCRBGZ Productions on YouTube. Again, go to NCRBGZ Productions on YouTube to be able to keep getting this information. Um, today, we want to talk about the crypto tsunami. We're in a state of emergency, family. Again, crypto tsunami. We're in a state of emergency. Now, with that being said, I have a panel member up here. I want to give him the opportunity to introduce himself to the family. Then we're going to jump right in, family. Hello, family. This is uh, Leonard Walker, president of Descendants of American Slaves Political Action Committee. Um, and a regular, hopefully a regular panel <laughs> um, on the show. All right, that's what's up, brother. So we're going to jump right in, family. we jump jumping right in, y'all. And look, welcome to the crypto tsunami, um, state of emergency. And we're going to jump right in. All right, so off gate, family. The first thing about a tsunami, you know when a tsunami is going to come, right? A tsunami is something that comes and it, and it terrorizes, right? It destroys stuff. So one of the first questions that you will ask yourself is what? Are you prepared? So when I say, are you prepared, I'm saying, are you prepared? What are you being prepared for, right? I want to know, are you prepared for a cashless society, right? Have you took the steps or the due diligence to be prepared to live in a cashless society? Because as we know with this coronavirus, things are moving to a cashless society, right? So I'll get, I got um, a couple uh, articles that I screenshot, right? This is Forbes, right? This is dated October the 22nd, 2020. It says, the pandemic is fast forwarding us to a cashless society and making life harder for the unbanked. Now, this is Forbes. This is an article on Forbes, October the 22nd, 2020, where they are talking about us moving forward into a cashless society. Like, this is something that is happening. Whether we like it or not, this is the path that we're moving into. So the question are, are you prepared for a cashless society, right? Here's another article that uh, was published on September the 27th. It says, will we see a cashless society by 2023? The first truly cashless society could be a reality by 2023, according to a new report from Global, from global Consultancy A.T. Kearney in just five years. Um, you can screenshot these articles, you can pull these articles up, and you can read these articles, family, right? I, I need to do one more thing, family. Um, but the question is, are you prepared? Are you and your family prepared for a cashless society right now? This is where we're headed, family. So we know with a tsunami, a tsunami is something that's coming. And right now, we have the opportunity to get prepared for this tsunami, family. So my question is, are you prepared, right? So let me keep moving, right? So when I ask, are you prepared, what do you do when you getting prepared? You start taking the necessary steps, right? So by you, how you start taking the necessary steps to prepare for this crypto tsunami, first, you have to get prepared to pay attention to what's going on in the news. The next thing that I want you to pay attention to is digital shopping or e-commerce, right? Because right now, e-commerce sales are expected to reach 4.2 trillion by the end of 2020. So by the end of this year, by the end of this year, right here, e-commerce sales are expected to be at 4.2 trillion. There's a, it says there's a big significance growth in e-commerce in recent years. In 2014, it was only 13 trillion. It says, but that number has more than tripled in 2020 to 4.2 trillion and is as anticipated to rise, right? This is an article, here go another article talking about e-commerce. It says e-commerce sales are predicted to hit 6.5 trillion by 2003. 2023. In fact, it says experts, it says, in fact, experts have projected 
annual revenue to climb all the way to 6.5 trillion in just three years. So what is this saying when you're talking about digital shopping? You're, first, you're talking about a cashless society where we are no longer using cash, right? So, and also, you're doing digital shopping. So now you're shopping from in the comfort of your home. So brick and mortar stores and businesses are shutting down, right? So when you got these brick and mortar businesses, stores are shutting down, or people are shopping from the comfort of their home because of the quote unquote coronavirus and afraid to transmit this virus to one another, you have to start using the three C's, right? I talked about this in the last video about the three C's where you use common sense, current events, and calculations. And you start making decisions based off these three C's, right? So with the digital shopping and the fact that e-commerce is rising and we are moving into a cashless society, certain things should become obvious and should be just rudimentary, right? Certain things should just automatically come. So remember I say you remember the three C's, right? Common sense, current events, and calculations. So we're moving into a cashless society, right? And it says by the year 2023, it's possible, right? E-commerce sales are at an all-time high. People are shopping from the comfort of their home, right? Now, we're going to talk about the fall of the dollar because this is something that a lot of people talk about, but I want y'all to see these articles that I have, right? It says, why the dollar is worth so much less, why the dollar is worth so much less than it used to be. Hear me out and listen to what I'm about to read. It says, a dollar doesn't buy nearly as much as it once did. As the cliche goes, since the early 20th century, the decline in the value of a dollar has been dramatically due to inflation. A dollar in 1913 had the same, had the same buying power as $26 in 2020. So basically what they're saying, a dollar 1913 is worth $26 today. So that tells you that the value of the dollar has really declined from then to now, right? Here's an article on June the 29th, 2020. It says, will the dollar collapse, right? This is up June the 29th, 2020, they're talking about the dollar will it collapse, right? So then it's also here's another article, October the fifth, two thousand and twenty. These are all recent articles, family. So this ain't something old. This is something new. It says there's U.S. dollar. There's possibility of a crash. Every time the stock market crashes or every time something go on, they talk about the value of the dollar dropping, right? It says the value of your U.S. dollar has been declining. Has been declining. Let me move this. But there is some concern that its decline could accelerate, throwing the U.S. economy into a sovereignty crisis. For years, the federal government has been underwriting the economy, pumping more and more credit into it, keep economic growth. So basically, it's saying the value of the dollar has been declining, declining for a while, and it's a possibility that it could really accelerate because of what's going on with this coronavirus and the government constantly printing money to put into the common economy to stimulate the economy because right now our economy ain't doing that well. So as you keep your uh, printing money, you're causing debt and the GDP to go skyrocket. So uh, eventually, the roosters, them chickens going to come home to roost. You can't just keep printing money and putting it in circulation without having goods and services to support that money, right? So, remember the three C's, family. Common sense, current events, and calculations. So, we're talking about a cashless society. We're talking about how online and e-commerce sales are going up. And now we're talking about the currency that people, most people use to buy these services and goods are falling. So, what is the obvious step when you have this stuff going on? When you see the... It's written all over the walls, right? When you get these signs in front of you all the time, what happens when you start seeing this stuff, right? When you see this stuff, you get to what? Welcome to the evolution. 
They said a revolution ain't going to be televised, but the evolution of money is already here, family. And what what is it? Bitcoin comes to the rescue. And Bitcoin comes to the rescue at a perfect time. It is not so much just the Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is the father of it. But you have altcoins with all the offsprings of children that come. And it comes at a perfect time to rescue us, right? So if you never read the letter by Satoshi Nakamoto, he wrote a letter in 2008. It's called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, right? The purpose of Bitcoin was the result of the financial crash of 2007 and 2008. That last financial crash that we had in 2000, 2007 and 2008 is what made Satoshi Nakamoto come up with the concept of a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, essentially taking the power away from the banks and giving it back to the consumers. Because now we can transfer our funds from each other peer to peer on a system, right? And you need to download this and read this family because this is where we're headed. This is the future. This is the evolution. The evolution of money is already here. This is where we're headed. This Bitcoin a peer to peer electronic cash system. You want to read that because it basically allows us to transfer money to one another on a peer to peer version, but it's done electronically. It's done by the internet of things, or it's done by the blockchain. Now, the blockchain, let's now, you know, I didn't put this in here, but I'm gonna just explain the blockchain real fast. The blockchain is basically one block. That's the Genesis block. That's the first block, right? But once you send transmissions to the next block, it connects the blocks to each other. And it's a chain that connects the Genesis blocks to the second block. But in these blocks are information. And these information, it gets transferred from one block to another block. That's why they call it a blockchain. You have the Genesis block, which is the first block. After the first block, the information gets transferred to the second block. And then it's a chain that links it together. That's where you get blockchain, family. And this is how you can always keep up with every transaction that's been done on the blockchain chain. It's able to be, it's able to be checked. So if I'm trying to sell you a car, for fifteen hundred dollars, and you tell me, look, I got fifteen hundred in Bitcoin. Where well, the blockchain is going to let me know if you have it or not. It's going to be on the blockchain, so you're not going to better beat me in the head. And I sell you, send you the car, and you send me a blank check. The blockchain stops that because it automatically makes it so it has to be verified off date, right? So look, the financial crisis. I don't. I just got off a little bit, but we're going to keep it moving. The financial crisis history of Bitcoin. It says Bitcoin was invented in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis and the crisis was let me move this and the crisis was a clear motivation factor for its creation. So the crisis of 2008 is what prompted Satoshi Nakamoto to create the Bitcoin. So now Bitcoin has come to the rescue. So now we're about to get into rest of the family. We got the, the little distance, the little talks away. And now we're going to get to what y'all want to see. Y'all want to see some charts, right? You want to see some evidence, right? Well, let's get to some of this evidence going on, right? So listen, please pay attention, family, because we're about to get serious right now. Now we're going to get real serious into Bitcoin. And while in the midst of a recession, the price of Bitcoin and altcoins are skyrocketing. This means that the altcoins and the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market is recession proof. Because for the dollar to fall and altcoins to be rising, it means that this is recession proof. So now Bitcoin is showing the world and proving that it is recession proof. So while most stocks are losing value, Gold is going up and down. Bitcoin and altcoins is on a steady incline, family. And we need to pay attention to this. Right, so here's an article. It says Bitcoin could reach over 300 k by the end of 2021, family. This is the Inc. Limited CMO that wrote this. 
Uh, his name is Douglas Borthwick. He discussed the future of Bitcoin, and he surmises that Bitcoin can reach over 300K by the end of 2021. It seems far-fetched, don't it? Let's just keep going. Citibank analyst says Bitcoin could pass 300,000K by December the 2021. This article was, now listen, the first article was published November the 15th, 2020. This article was published November the 16th, 2020. Both these articles are posted on the same day, but they're different people. They're not the same people making these predictions, right? And here go another article. Cause we about to get serious right now. I'm about to show you if you want to blow y'all mind. We about to get serious with this thing. Bitcoin could pass 300K by December 2021. This was, article was posted on November the 21st by Bitstamp B, BTC USD form, right? Now, listen family. This chart, it actually has the chart and the projection of why this is being predicted. Now, when somebody say Bitcoin can go up to 300K by the end of 2021, people are like, man, you crazy, right? I say that Bitcoin can get up to half a, uh, a quarter a quarter of a million. I think by the year 2021, we can look at $250,000 per Bitcoin. And I can tell you why. Because eventually, when Bitcoin first came out, it was people curious. It was the curious stage. So it was the early, early adopters was the first stage of Bitcoin, the first wave of Bitcoin. Then we got the second wave of Bitcoin where it got, where people started hearing about it. So it started getting a little ma mainstream, right? But this wave right now, you have investors that are jumping in Bitcoin and seeing Bitcoin as a store of value. They saying that it's gold on steroids because the store of value and the potential of Bitcoin is so high. These are what the so-called experts are saying because it's a store of value now because in this crisis that we have going on, Bitcoin is still rising. It's still going up. While everything else is going down, Bitcoin and altcoins are still going up. So it's proving its worth while everything is dying, it seems like everything is going to shit and all your money ain't worth nothing, you ain't working, you're staying at home, Bitcoin is taking off. It's proven that it is recession proof, family. That's what it's proven. And they're predicting 300K by the end of 2021. Now, let me show y'all something, man. Now, let's, let's get down to it. Now, now, right here, let's forget the conclusion part because this ain't the end. I don't want to let me go back one. This ain't the end. Let me show y'all something. Every four years, this is a this is a um a a, a, a chart of Bitcoin that shows its growth every four years. And also, fam, look, remember, subscribe to NCRBGZ Productions on YouTube. This is the only place you're gonna be getting this information from now on. I'm telling you. NCRBGZ Productions on YouTube is going to be the only place where you will continue to get this information. All right, so listen, in 2010, Bitcoin went up 9,900%. 2011, it went up 1,473%. By the year 2012, it went up 186%. By the fourth year, 2013, it went up 5,481% in the bull run, All right? Let's look at 2014. It was minus 57%. 2015, it went up 34%. 2016, it went up 123%. 2017, in the midst of the bull run, it went up 1,368%. 2018, what it did after the bull run, minus 73%. That's the bear run. 2019, it was steady, 92%. 2000, this is where we at right now, 2020, family. In the year 2020, right now, we're at 121% plus because it's still moving. Where can 2021 be? Huh? 
Where can you imagine? Now, if you look at every four years, you see Bitcoin go up at least a thousand percent in 2017, 2013 with a five thousand percent. So let's say Bitcoin go up a thousand percent in 2021. Well, what would that price be? So you can look at this. This is calculations, common sense, um, common sense, calculations, and current events. This right here, when you look at stuff like this, it takes it from the realm of guessing, and now you have charts to go by. You have some empirical data that says this is what happens every four years. So now you can see why they are predicting 300K by the end of 2021. You can see why these people have predicted 300K by the end of 2021, because they know 2021 is the end of the bull run. We already started the bull run, and we're in the year 2020. The bull run has already started, family, and we're in the year 2020. So we don't even know what this percentage could be by the end of 2021, by the end of 2020. Is that 121%? It can be 150% uh, by the end of this year. We don't know. But what we do know is by that fourth year, we at least going up 1,000%. So with the rise of Bitcoin, 